Amen. I just want to welcome you out to the uh, Potter's House Enfield uh, Church. We're glad you could uh, just be on the social platform uh, to join with us for, for service this afternoon. Um, just want to, before I preach, I just want to give you some brief announcements. We've got morning prayer at 8 o'clock Monday to Friday. Uh, I think that's a Google uh, Meet prayer meeting. Uh, the link for that will be on the description, which is just below the, the, the YouTube sermon. Um, so if you look just below this sermon uh, on YouTube, you'll see a description area. The link's on there uh, for the Monday to Friday prayer meeting at 8 o'clock. We've also got a prayer meeting on Monday evening. Uh, that's at 8 p.m. That's also on the Google Meet um, platform. Um, again, it'd be good if you can join with us to pray. Again, our nation needs our prayer, our family, our friends need our prayer. Please join with us if you can. If you can make it, Pastor Yan will be there uh, um, leading the prayer meeting. On Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, we've got Bible study again on the Google Meet uh, platform that's at 6 30 p.m we're studying um defending the rapture very relevant very interesting topic and um if you can make that that would be great i don't know what week it is but um i know it's a series and uh, we're also doing that series in our church in walthamstow and uh people are really enjoying it so and learning a lot man we're living in the last days and there's a lot of strategies that, are, that are at work against uh, uh um, you know what god wants to do on the earth you know that the rapture is is imminent um and so we're believing god man to take us out of this crazy place just before it goes absolutely you know ab ab before it gets worse and that's god's promise amen so join with us on wednesday bible study defending the rapture uh just uh, by way of announcement some of you may or may not know that pastor yan his father passed away uh late last week i think it was quite a, quite a sudden uh, event and so obviously he's a little bit uh, you know shaken. I spoke to him. He's he's doing okay. Maybe you spoke to him as well. And uh, he and uh, Christine and the family, Jan's mum. Uh, but what we can do, we can pray. We can pray for the family. So please, let's pray now, and let's just pray that God would be a, a comfort to them. Let's pray for Pastor Jan's mum. Pray for strength for the family, Lord. For, for you know, for the for direction for them. Again, it's a very difficult time. Grief is a, is a funny thing. One day you feel great, one day you, you, you don't feel so good. But, um, but let's, let's, let's just bow our heads and pray right now and uh, ask God to help us. Father, we're asking that you would um, visit Pastor Yan and his family right now, Lord God. We pray, God, that our prayers would go before them right now, God, that, that our prayers would go before and just to help and be a support, God, that you would undergird the family. God, you would comfort those who mourn as your word declares you would. God, we pray for Pastor Yan's mom, a very difficult time for her and for the family. Lord, we're asking, God, that you would um, just help them, that they would stay calm during this time. Let the enemy not have a, get a foothold uh, to distort minds and to bring panic at this time, Lord. But we thank you, Lord, that you're in control. We hand this situ over, situation over to you, Lord God. We're asking that you, Lord God, would, would, would meet with them. You would bring a peace, Lord God, that uh, passes all understanding. That you would bring a comfort, God, that you would give them strength, Lord. And all the other things, God, that you can provide for them at this time. We're asking for your help. We're asking for your grace. And we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, God. We thank you, Lord, for being there for us and for the family at this time. In Jesus' wonderful name, and all God's people said, Amen. Well, praise God. Well, I'm going to preach a sermon this, uh, this afternoon, and I've entitled the sermon, and uh, it's Be Still, and then and Know That I'm God. It's taken from, we're going to read um, Psalms uh, chapter 46. If you can turn there with me, Psalms 46, Be Still, and Know That I'm God. And this sermon was born out of... Um, our experience of moving to Ireland, we moved from London. Uh, I've been on staff in the church in London for, 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 for some years. And, uh, you know, London life, <laughs> no other life like London life and uh, maybe New York. But uh, we kind of live here. We live in London and we don't understand the pace of life that we live. People come to, to this place on holiday, they come and they visit and they think, man, this, you guys are crazy, you know, we're, we're, just the lanes are small, the roads, are, you know, the bobbing in and out, the phones ringing all the time and, uh, you know, the, the traffic and the shops are open 24-7. To us, this is normal, but to a lot of people, this is quite strange. 
And when we moved to Ireland, uh, uh, we, we, we kind of took this busyness with us and uh, we realized very quickly in Ireland that everybody goes to bed at nine o'clock. Nine o'clock every, you know, the, the, it's dark, the, the, you know, uh, uh, the, the you know, curtains are closed, the doors are closed, and most people are inside. And so we kind of struggled with this. People looked at us and looked at our, you know, we're inviting people over to our house and we've kind of got fellowship and we've got things going on out and visiting people, visiting people, knocking the door at 8.30, yeah, and they're like in their pajamas ready to go to bed. I thought, oh gosh. Uh, and so at this pace of life that we're living, it is, it's kind of, you know, I look like an alien. My family looked like we, we didn't look attractive. It's like, man, you, you guys are moving at 90 miles an hour. Whoa. So we had to very quickly learn to just get out of the London life and we had to learn to slow down. But I think that God wants us to slow down generally as a people not just in london all of because as, as a people i think we we, we kind of love that kind of fast-paced life we might not be moving at london at speed but we're all over the world wherever we are we can busy ourselves with things and we can make loads of excuses as as to why we've got no time for god but I think God wants to teach us something to say, listen, guys, we need to slow down. You need to, you know, just, just lessen the pace a little bit and you'll have more time to discover who I am. Maybe if you're watching the live stream link, you're new and you don't, you don't know God. God is a great God, but you're going to have to slow down to get to know him. You're going to have to stop pretending that we're so busy. We pretend that we're so busy so that we can get to know God. So let's read our text this evening, Psalms chapter 46, from verse 1. It says, God is, a refu is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Then there was a word, Selah. It's a pause. Verse 4, it says, There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her, and she shall not be moved. God shall keep her just at the break of dawn. The nations raged, the kingdoms were moved. She uttered her voice, the earth melted. Verse 7, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Again, that word Selah, which means a pause. Come behold the works of the Lord, who, made, who has made desolations in the earth. He makes a war cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spears in two. He burns the chariots in fire. And verse 10, this is the point I wanted to make. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted amongst the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I want to look firstly at the busyness of life because as I was saying in my introduction, we do live busy lives. And I remember some years ago, man, you know, just when in, in the, the early mid 90s, technologies kind of come in the phones and, and uh, the Internet and all this stuff is, is coming along. And uh, we're, we're kind of boasting that, you know, with all of this technology, we will work less hours. When what took us a day to do will now take us a few hours, and so we're going to have more time. They're talking about working a four-day week. And so with the advancement of technology, we realize that instead of working less, we're working more. We're doing our day's work. We're doing a week's work in a day now, and, 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 and still the demands are more and more and more now. Technology has increased, and so has a workload. You know, whereas before you would go to the office, do your work and leave the office, leave your work behind and go in the next day. Well, now we're taking our offices with us. We're taking our offices home. We're taking our work home. We can pick up emails on our phone. We can pick up emails uh, on the laptop. We can pick up emails anywhere and we can work from anywhere. We can work from home. We can work on the bus. We can work on the tube. We can work in the park. We can work in the coffee shop. And we're finding that instead of being 
or working less hours, we're actually wo working more hours and we're busy people. You know, some of us may like this though because uh, there's something exciting about being busy. You know, sometimes we equate busyness with importance. And many people think, you know, because the, 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 the more important I am, it means the busier I am. And so we are busier because we feel more important. But you wonder if the, in all the busyness, in the busyness that has taken place, you know, I was wondering if the, this busyness can be a tool that the enemy can use to destroy us. Busyness in itself is not evil, but the devil's plan is to have you and I so busy, busy with work, busy with play, busy watching football, busy with recreation, busy playing games, busy with distractions. You know, the world is busy doing drugs and busy drinking alcohol and whatever it is. But as long as we're busy, the devil just wants us to be busy. And the busier that you and I are, the less likely we are to hear the voice of God. And our text opens with busyness. It talks about the mountains moving and the sea roaring and the mountains shaking. And there's a whole lot going on in that verse. And it says in Psalms 46 verse 2, Even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, thrown in the midst of that text is that word which I spoke about, Selah. And Selah is a pause. And it means pause, it means stop. The Selah or the pause was meant to link the two verses together. But it's showing a contrast. Verse 2 and 3, busy, even though the earth be removed and, and the, the mountains and all these things are happening. Then we read, pause, stop. But there is a river. Verse 4 reads, there is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her and she shall not be moved. So we've moved from the roaring waters and the shaking mountains to a river bringing fresh, clean running water. And in this place, God's presence is. In this place is a calm. We move from chaos and busyness to stillness and peace with the word Selah. You know, the modern day translation would be something like this. Everything around us is going wrong. We're screaming, we're panicking, the TV's going, there's noise, there's music, there's everything. But if we pause, we can learn to see and we can learn to find God's peace. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter if you're in London. It doesn't matter if you're in New York. It doesn't matter if you live in chaos. If we learn to pause, we can find God's peace. The problem is, though, is that we are not a Selah generation. And what I mean by that is that we don't do pauses very well. How many times have, you know, we read the Bible and then we just, we've done our devotion, we've done our morning reading, even we just close the book, woof, and off we go. No pause to allow God's word to speak to us. God's word is supposed to be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path, the Psalms 119. But we read and go. We've done our reading, woof, and off we go. We haven't paused, we haven't stopped, we haven't. How many times have you spoken to someone in need and walked away? I remember when I moved from Barbados here, I was shocked as that I'd, I'd stop people on the street and ask them the time. But they would just rush past. And then when they realized I was just asking the time, they would stop down the road and went, oh, 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 it's four o'clock. And I'm thinking that, but people are just so, so busy. Maybe you've spoken to someone and someone's poured out their heart to you. 
But you've got 101 things going on in your mind. So you listen to them. Yes, uh uh-huh, uh-huh, great. Wow, 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 fantastic, wonderful. And then we walk off and only realize what they said an hour later. There was a flag, there was a cry for help. But at the time, because our minds were racing so much and we're so busy, we're not actually listening to what they're saying. How many times have we made spur of the moment decisions without weighing up the options, without considering the consequences of the choices that are before us? We're not good pausers, church. But God has put the pause in the psalm so that we would stop and we would think about what we're reading. You know, God wants us to have pauses in our lives too, not just in the text. God wants us to have pauses. So let's look at this. Because pauses are more important than we think. The importance of the Selah. God has built these pauses, not only in the text, but he wants them to to be built in our lives for our own benefit. You know, Selah is a, a time to rest. You know, the Sabbath was called the day of rest. Mankind is not designed to keep working around the clock. I know we come here and we work four, five, six jobs and, you know, we come home and we just pack our lives with things busyness importance but rest is important even God had time to rest it says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 2 and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done and I don't think that God needed rest on the seventh day because he was tired I think God built that rest in there for man's sake. God says, if I rest, you need to rest. More so you need to rest. Exodus 31, chapter 15, it says, Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Not only did uh, man need rest, But God says, my creation needs rest. So let's look. God built a rest into the creation. He said in Exodus chapter 23, verse 10 to 12, he says, plant your harvest, your crop for six days, but let the land rest and lie fallow during the seventh year. Verse 12, he says, work for six days and rest on the seventh. This will give your ox and your donkey, God's thinking about the ox and the donkey, a chance to rest. It will also allow the people of your household including your slaves and visitors to be refreshed the sabbath was actually a time when that god forced in our schedule for you and i to spend some time alone with him or to spend some time with him he knows how busy we are he knows how busy we can be he knows how how we like to be busy You know, there was a big debate a few years ago when, uh, probably in the early 90s, and they were talking about the shops opening seven days a week. Nine to five, seven days a week. I was caught, I was working in, in retail at the time and as a, as a new Christian. And I realized it's going to affect my church attendance. But it's not going to affect just the church attendance, it will affect family time. Sunday's a time that many families are home together. You can have a meal around the table as a family. We all have Sunday lunch together. Well, that be, would be affected. And what has been eroded is time together, time that we can spend as a family, even just one meal around the table. The second importance of the pause of the cellar is time to sleep. You know, night time is a pause between two days and it's important that we close off one day leave its troubles behind rest wake up the next morning and start a new chapter or a new day Ephesians 4 26 is don't don't end your day angry let it go don't pass on yesterday's stress onto today can you imagine if there was no night we'd just go from one day to another 
The night is important. The night is a time where we rest our, our head. We put our head down. We begin to sleep. It says Lamentations 3 verse 23. It says uh, God tells us that God's mercies are new every morning. So in order to have a morning, you need to have a night. You need to have that period of time, that rest time, where the morning is a brand new day. The troubles of yesterday don't have to be carried over to today. You notice at night everything slows down. You listen to your phone in the daytime, it's, uh, it's, you can hardly hear it. But listen to your phone at night while you're lying down in bed and you've got to turn the volume down because it can sound so loud because at night everything slows down. The stillness of the night, a time to slow down, a time to relax, a time to sleep, a time not to work. When we sleep, God's built into the equation that our body would repair itself. God is built into the equation when we sleep that our body would grow, that our minds would rest. You know, sometimes our minds could be racing. Well, sleep sometimes is, is, is that your mind can rest. Then you can begin to think again. But Satan knows that if he can get, if he can hinder our sleep, Satan knows that if he can, it will affect your performance. You know that the sleep deprivation is a form of torture. You know, there's many people that worry and wrestle and struggle and, and they, they can't sleep well because at night time, their minds are just going round and round and round and round. Well, that will affect you the following day because when you should be waking up, fresh and receiving God's uh, mercies, these new mercies, you're waking up and you're still tired from yesterday. You're still worn out because you haven't slept. And that goes on day after day after day. It will affect your performance for work. It will affect your performance for everything. It will affect your relationships. But that's the enemy's strategy that he would fill our mind with worry. Psalms 3 verse 24, it says, If you sit down, you will not be afraid. When you lie down, your sleep will be sweet. Our sleep should be sweet because sleep is important. The second importance for the pause is that God gives, it gives me time to think. Now I want you to hear me with this. Because Christianity is a, is a thinking man's religion. God wants us to think and the more that we think, the more of God we see and the more he'll be glorified. You ever walk down the street and you see some flowers along the side? Have you ever stopped to think about the design of the flowers, the de design of the petals, the design of the, the leaves and, the, or, and, and just the beauty? Uh, when you look at these things, it says that we will find uh, God's signature in there. It says Romans 1.20, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood, by the things that he made, um, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that, they are, so that they are without excuse. Man, you can find God's signature. You can find the glory of God all around, this, all around the world, all around the creation. You don't have to go to the Himalayas. You don't have to go to the, to the, uh, the outer parts of, of, of the uh, Amazon jungle or whatever to find God's glory. You can find it right here in your back garden. You can look up to the sky. You can look at the hills. You can find the glory of God in any creation. People many times, they get saved because they begin to stop and think just about their own lives. Because, you know, sometimes we play, we've got these earphones on, we play music all the time and at night we listen to uh, our stuff or we watch TV or we play games and we fill our minds. Oftentimes, because we don't want to stop, we don't want to think and we don't want to face the reality of who we are. We don't want our, our, our own conscience to speak to us. And so many times people will discover God when they begin to stop. Turn the music off. Turn the TV off. And you begin to hear God's voice. We begin to hear our own voice and we come to the conclusion, some very harsh realities about our lives that we don't have it all together. I'm going nowhere. I'm making bad decisions. 
my life's not working out. I need help. We can hear these things when we begin to stop. We begin to shut out all the noise and all the sounds that would just kind of clutter our lives. Those pondering moments can be quite scary, but they're necessary. That's why the devil has so many of us busy with one thing or another. No time to think. Busy on our phones. Busy listening to music. Busy playing games. The devil knows that if he can keep people hurried and he can keep them from finding and from knowing God. And when we think that we can see God at work in our lives, Sorry, we can see God at work in our lives if we just begin to slow down. Verse 7 says, God is with us. You know, we can spend time in prayer asking God for things and then not notice that God actually answers our prayer. We're busy. We can spend time where we can come before God with that. We can bring a list of things and we can begin to cry out to God and say, God, I want to pray for this. I want to pray for finances. I want to pray for this. God, help me. God, protect me. Psalms 46, 8 to 10, it says, Come and see the glorious things that our God does, how he brings ruin upon the world and causes uh, wars to end throughout the earth, breaking and burning every weapon. But we don't want to get so busy that we pray, but we don't see the answers to our prayer, not because God's not answering, it's that we actually don't take time to see the answer to prayer. It's only when we stop and think that we'll actually see that God is with us and God is working on our behalf. We actually need to take time to stop and to read God's word. Finally, brethren, Philippians 4, 8. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely and of good report. If there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. It says it in there, meditate or think about these things. If there's anything lovely, stop and think about it. If there's anything praiseworthy, stop and think about it. If there's anything of good report, stop and think about it. Sorry, I just lost where I am. One second. Amen. I'm just preaching off this phone here because... Amen. Here we go. Amen. There I am. Praise God. You know, we were doing a sermon series and, and uh, you know, we're just looking at portions of text in the Bible. But you, you would, man, it's good to take time to slow down just to look at and study out a portion of, of, of God's Word. You'd be surprised how much is packed in there. But, you know, again, we're busy people. We read and off we go but the word of God is really for us to mine it to study it to break it down to think about what you read I preached a sermon a little while ago on, on Philemon and uh, I read the book over and over and over and over and just as you as I'm reading it I'm just picking up not what it says but what he, what Paul feels what Philemon is feeling what Onesimus is feeling over and, and I'm thinking man the word of God is coming alive as I take time to study it to read it to ponder to think about it and as you and I dig God's word and as you and I spend time on reading a small portion of scripture a verse a chapter God will begin to speak to us through that you know, I just want to look at some storms because, you know, in our text it, talk, it talks about some storms and, you know, some storms are, are, are fixable in our lives. It says, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling, some storms come our way. 
and they're not that big, you know, the, 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 some difficulties, you know. It's a storm, yes. It's a trial, yes. It's a, it's a, it's a bad situation, yes. But if we, we can think our way out of it, we can navigate our way through it, we can talk to somebody, we can get advice, we can do this, we can do that, and we can get out of the storm. But I want to let you know that there's other storms that are just too big for us. We didn't cause it, possibly. Maybe we did. But there's nothing we can do to, to change a circumstance in this situation. You can pray louder. You can fast longer. You can give more. But it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything to get God's attention. You know, the prophets of Baal in 1 Kings chapter 18, I don't know if you remember them, you know, the, the, you know, the Elijah's going up against these, I think it's 40 prophets of, of Baal. And Elijah's watching them, they're, they're, they're whipping themselves, they're screaming, they're, they're, they're dancing in a frenzy, they're doing all of these things to get their God's attention. But it says in the text, as was their custom with knives and lances until blood gushed out. And uh, it says, but there was no voice no one answers, no one paid attention. And sometimes we can do all of these things, you know, we can pray louder, we can pray longer, pray harder, fast, we can do all of these things, but it doesn't do anything. It won't get God's attention. Sometimes God says, be still and know that I'm God. So I look one as I close that, be still. Just be still and know that God is God. Be still, that word rafa, it means to relax or to let go or to be quiet. To know, to learn or to know by experience. So let's look at um, just these things. In the storms of our lives, I could panic, I could run, I could collapse or I could learn to put God to the test. It's not an easy exam, but I could, I could run, I could panic, I could do all of these things. But some point, church, you and I have to stop and learn to put God to the test. Try me now, says in the book of Malachi. Try me now. Isn't that what faith's all about? Believe in God before we actually see the result. I could pray and ask God to help me, but I have to wait for him to lead me. It says in Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31, But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall trust, so they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. You know, we can also know God by experience. Some of us, you know, God has already shown you his love for you by his power. And yet we still panic. God's shown us that he loves us. We're talking about knowing God by experience. Be still and know from past experiences that God will help you and I. God's moved in one area of our lives. So we know from experience that God has helped me. Well, I remember Pastor Greg Mitchell said in one sermon, it so blessed my soul. He said that if God has moved for you in one area, whether it be finances, whether it be health, uh, whatever it is, God's answered your prayer. Well, that's transferable to another area. But sometimes we, we kind of like to uh, uh, put things in a box. Well, God moved for me here, but I don't know if God will move for me there. Well, God, he, he was saying, if God's moved for you here, why can't God move for you there? God's moved for you here to let you know that he's with you. And if God is with you, don't let the enemy say that God can't move for you here. Oh, God moved for me with my health, but he won't help me with finances. But we've got to know God by experience.
When God moves for you, God is letting you know that he's with you. And you can be confident that if he's helped you, he can help you there. The other way we're supposed to know God, we're supposed to know him personally. You and I have to get to know God personally. You know, we can have scripture knowledge, we can have head knowledge, and I guess that's good, but it's not good enough. That's where the, co- the confidence actually comes with knowing God personally. We, you know, Donatus in our church, he sings a song and it says, I know, and I know, and I know. And it's a fantastic song. The church love it. But he was just saying, I know, and I know God personally. So David uh, wrote in Psalms 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you're with me. For your rod and their staff, they comfort me. Amen. I've lost my place again. Here I am. I will fear no evil for you're with me. Your rod and the staff, they shall comfort me. David went through the valley. He knew God personally. And therefore he had a confidence that God will be with him. So in closing, I'm, I'm closing now. I don't know how long I've preached for. Uh, 36 minutes, amen. Not too bad. Let us learn to slow down. We're coming out of lockdown, right? We're coming out of lockdown maybe next week. Uh, uh, things are going to ease up and change again. And we've been in lockdown for a, for a season. And at first, we, whatever, it, 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 we were busy, but now we we went through a real period where there was no cars on the road. We were all locked in our houses and, and uh, we all had more time. We all slowed down. No one was going anywhere. The cars were all parked up along our roads. But now life is getting a little bit busier again, a little bit busier. There's more cars, cars on the road. We're going back to work. Uh, some days, maybe every day, maybe. Kids are going back to school, but life is getting a bit busier again. It would be a shame if you and I would just go back to the busyness of life and we haven't learned just something about be still and know that I'm God. Maybe God allowed this time so that we can learn to be still, learn to spend more time with him, learn to just to just to pray and ponder God more learn to read our Bible and fall in love with God in his word a bit more it would be a shame if we were to just end this season and when we go back to the to the busy nine to five the tubes are rushing on the train and the rushing home and the rushing here and the rushing there it would be a shame if we go back because the world is changing. We say, as I close, that the world is changing. Well, church, if the world is changing, we have to change. And one of the things is that we can't allow the world to dictate the pace that we go. God said to us, be still and know that I'm God. Let's bow our heads this evening. Amen. God really does love us and he really does want to spend time with you and I and sometimes it can be so difficult because we're, we're busy and we're moving but God has built the pause into the text and he's also built a pause into all of creation and he also wants to build a pause into you and I that we would slow down maybe you're one of those people that man you just the buzz of busyness and it's good to be busy but it's not good to be too busy so let's just ponder that we, we, can, we can just learn to, to, to spend time with, with, with God himself, the most important being in all creation. Man, we can be busy doing this and, do that and, and so leave God out of the picture. We need time to sleep. We need time to think. We need time to listen. We need time to listen to God's voice. We need time to read. We need time for all of these things. And I think it's time that you and I would 
just take time out, just to slow down. We still got to get on with life. We understand that. Life still moves. But sometimes we complain that we're so busy. Oh, life is so busy. No, nah, not so. Not so. God says there is time in the day. There is time in the morning. There's time in the evening. There's time that you and I can spend just relaxing. I, I, I want to, maybe you're here this evening and you've, you've come on the, on the live stream and, uh, you know, we serve a wonderful God. And one of the things is that God is, when God made us and he made the world and he made everything in the world, God put time for everything. God thought of absolutely everything and he thought of you. And maybe you're living right now and you're living outside of his uh, um, presence. Maybe you're living outside of his, of his joy. You're maybe you're living outside of his will. Well, God doesn't want that. We're not eternal beings. We don't last forever. The, the Bible says that there's uh, three score and ten years on this earth, in this flesh, in this body. And in that space of time, you and I have a responsibility and we have the privilege to get to know the creator of the universe. And so maybe you haven't done that, but I, I want to say today could be the day of salvation for you. I'm going to lead you through a prayer. Maybe you want to repeat this prayer with me. Maybe you're tired of your sin. Maybe you're tired of being so busy. Maybe you're tired of running around. Maybe you're tired of looking for answers. Maybe you're, you're, you're so busy moving because you're afraid of what's in your own mind, what's in your own heart. You're afraid of looking in the mirror. Well, I want to say that God wants you to pause. So I want you to pause this evening. And I want you to pray this prayer. I'm going to lead you through a prayer. And what we're going to do, we're going to invite Jesus Christ the giver of peace to come into your heart, to give you a peace that surpasses all understanding, a peace that this world can't take away. The Bible says that God will wash your sin away and make you brand new on the inside. So let's pray this evening. If we can bow our heads. And if that's you this evening, you want to give your heart to Jesus Christ, you want to turn from your sin, I want you to pray this prayer. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for seeing my life and my situation and God I want to turn from my sin say those words God I want to turn from my sin I believe that Jesus Christ came to this earth and hung on a rugged cross and his blood was shed so that my sin could be washed away and forgiven and I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to be my Lord and Savior from this moment forward. I believe he died on that cross for me. And I believe he rose on the third day. And I ask Jesus to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to make me brand new on the inside. Lord, I'd ask you to break the chains of sin that have held me bound. God, give me the desire to live for you from this moment forward. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, a very simple prayer. God's heard you. And by his spirit, he's come to live inside of your heart. And, he, you know, you, you've invited him in. He's not, he's not a... Uh, 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 um, he won't force his way into your life. He's asked for it. He wants an invitation. If you just invited him in and he's come into your life and you'll find there'll be a difference. And so if you've just prayed that prayer, you, there will be a, a, a phone number just at the bottom of this, I think in the description link. If you've just phoned that number and you just, uh, just give, uh, or you, you can text the word saved, um, to whoever uh, uh, will answer that. I think that might be Pastor Yan that would answer that. And then, you know, somebody can just help you with just, how do I start off as a brand new Christian? How do I start off my new life being born again, being washed by the blood of Jesus? So well, we can give you some help. We can give you some tips. It's, and so if you could just text that number to say saved, 
What a glorious moment. Just as I close, just before I close, I just want to talk about, I spoke about sleep in the sermon. And, and, and uh, specifically, I prayed this before, is that some people are struggling with sleep at night. And again, as I said, that's a strategy of the enemy. And uh, so maybe you're, you're struggling to sleep and you don't get a good night's rest. The Bible says that sleep is sweet and we should all have a good night's rest. And that could be a strategy that the enemy uses to stress you out. Maybe you're worried, maybe you're, 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 there's things that are burdening your mind. But we should be resting at night. We should be able to sleep at night. That's a gift from God. And the enemy would rob you and I of sleep. So I just want you to pray. I want to pray for you right now if you're struggling to sleep. Let's pray, bow our heads. Let's pray this prayer together. Uh, say, Heavenly Father, again, I thank you for seeing my situation. And I repent right now of worrying and being anxious for things that I cannot change. And God, I choose to trust you. I trust you with my life. God, I trust you with my finances. God, I choose to trust you with my health. God, I choose to trust you with my relationships. God, I choose to trust you with my future. God, and forgive me for worrying about these things. And I rebuke right now the enemy who seeks to rob me of peace. And I rebuke this every strategy that comes against my life that would stop me from sleeping at night. I claim in the name of Jesus perfect peace over my mind and over my body that I can go to bed at night and have a good night's sleep that my body can rest I claim peace that my mind can rest and I claim the peace of God that I can just sleep and be refreshed at night and I can wake up fresh in the morning with energy with vitality with vigor to start a new day Father, I claim all this in the name of Jesus and I thank you for your love and I thank you for your care over my life. And I seal this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Just let Pastor Yan know, you know, it'd be great to, to hear, you know, again, guys, we need to slow down. We, we, we move way too fast and we, we spend a lot of time doing all this. Other. Spend time with Jesus. If, if you're struggling to pray, uh, uh, and you prayed that to sleep sorry and you've prayed that prayer please let us know how you get on I uh, just want to say thank you for a privilege for, for listening to me if I've gone on a little bit I'm sorry uh, um, but again please pray for Pastor Jan pray for the church uh, pray for the reopening you know at the end of this uh, of this uh, lockdown season when we do have church again for those of us who can have church there's a lot of people watching on the live stream that uh, maybe that service is over that that that, that uh, you know we can have services again please do come to church You've been watching on the live stream fantastic but there's nothing like gathering together as a people of God and uh, again, uh, God bless you. Have a good weekend and I uh, look forward to uh, seeing you sometime soon. Amen. Bye.